understanding God's kind of love. Love is the greatest spiritual virtue and asset of every believer. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 13, the New King James Version, and now abide faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Now abided faith. I know you're a faith giant. You have hope that God can do all things. But say, put all together. Love is the greatest. Love is your connectivity to divinity. It also defines your worth in life. Love. In 1 John 4, 8. The Bible says, He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Listen carefully. God is not prayer. Prayer warrior, he answers prayers. God is not miracles. He's a miracle working God. God is not word of knowledge. God is not science and wonders. But God is love. And can two work together except they be agreed. If God is love, if I don't understand love, God can't work with me. I pray you have understanding. You must read it. So, love establishes our companionship with God. And if God be for us, who can be against us? So those who walk in love, no devil can kill them. Romans 8.31. It said, eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has he entered the heart of man. What God has prepared for them that love him. So when you are a lover of God, you become a wonder on the earth. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has he entered the heart of man. What God has prepared for those who understand love. I pray from this moment, you will understand what love is in your life. But hear this and hear me well. God's love is already in us. It is inside of us already. In Romans 5.5 5, we said, And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So, every child of God, you already have the gift of love inside you. True? Is God on your side? So, He's inside you. It's right here. But hear this and hear me well, people of God. In John 13, verse 35. He said, by this shall all men know. <laughs> shall we read together? That's scripture. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if you love one to another. So, people will not know we are Christians until God's love is demonstrated to us. If God's love is not demonstrated to us, nobody will value your Christianity. He said, by this, all men will know. They will not know by you putting Jesus is coming soon. They will not know by you carrying a big Bible. They will not know by you putting stickers on your car. They will know when you demonstrate the love of God that you are a child of God. It's right here. And God's kind of love is different from human love. Human love can turn to hatred overnight, but not God's kind of love. Now, God's love is summarized in 1 Corinthians 13. But for today's teaching, I'm going to take it from 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8. 
That's why I will take today's teaching form. Shout hallelujah. Preaching love does not mean you understand love. Sending texts, I love you, does not mean you understand love. Love is too deep. Shallow men think they know what love is. I know people don't know love. Yes, they preach love. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8. I'll read the New King James Version and I'll read the Amplified. We've been interchanging the two. Because I want the New King James because it's used laws of charity. Now, in the New King James says, I'll read four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll read four, you read five. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. You read verse five. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. So God's love is greater than prophecies. Greater than tongues, it's greater than knowledge. Because one day all will pass away, but not God's love. You know why? Do you know the reason? Prophecies will fail. In heaven, there is no prophecy. Tongues will fail. In heaven, there is no tongue. But because God is love, love in heaven will still continue because He's Him and God is eternal. So when you walk in love, love does not fail even in heaven. That's what he said. All shall pass away but not love because love is me. And there's no way I will pass away. Do you understand it? Because God is eternal and love is him. So I said, those who think they know love, they don't know love. <laughs> and for today's teaching, we're looking at the virtues of love. The virtues of what? Now listen, I want to take your time to listen to the teachings because I'm not teaching theory, I'm teaching what I live. What I'm teaching now is not uh, just here. No, 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 no. The greatest secret of my life is love. And I'm going to teach what I... I was talking to a young man last night. I said, my son, I picked a book and I showed him. I said, are you sure you've read this book? He looked at me. I said, are you sure this book you read it? Because I told all the pastors to read that book. Walk with me. I said, are you sure you read this book? I said, if you read this book, it will show. One is reading book and two, getting revelation of what you read. Many people have read about prosperity, they are still poor. Some even preach prosperity and are still begging after they preach. Otherwise, I would only want to preach prosperity and then they be begging. If you don't, if you don't, this program will end. Then it's not, it's not, it doesn't understand it because God's program can't end. Man can't support God. But, so you, you preach something, doesn't mean you understand what you preach. I was preaching prosperity when I didn't understand prosperity. So you can teach something without what? Do you know how I came out of poverty? When we came out of Bible school, I didn't understand prosperity. I've never shared it deeply with people. I don't understand. Under pressure is when you know whether you understand what you're teaching. I do understand. They taught us prosperity. Bishop, what about taught us prosperity? I do understand it. I was paying tight. Why do you understand? When we had to start this ministry, I was under pressure. So much pressure. So, there was a man I prayed for and I met him. I said, no, I'm going to Paragot. It's well. And the man gave me excuses. Within me, I knew that I was trying to solicit. So I told myself, boy, you don't understand this thing because you're trying to tell this man to help you. That means you don't understand. So I told myself, boy, you don't understand prosperity because under this pressure, you are trying to tell him if he can help you to pay the house rent. So you don't know it. So I told myself, boy, you don't know prosperity yet. So I went back. After Bible school, I sat down with Copeland's book. I said, since I'm trying to solicit from somebody, it means I've not understood this thing. I should deceive myself. So I sat with the word and got revelation on prosperity. Boy, Till Jesus comes, no economy can make me poor. 
I got light on kingdom wealth. Someone was telling me, you know, the churches, you know, they should have them. I said, if you have 50% of my light, take me to a, listen, I started as a brother. Hope you know my story. It was only two years of new birth that made, that made me enter ministry. Two years, no, not two, less than two years. So less than two years. And somebody's been born again for 10 years, you're still looking for somebody to beg from. You've not gotten the light. And don't deceive yourself. If you don't know it, you don't know it. You can't go to exam because of age and pass if you don't have the fast. You can't say, well, I, you know, I failed my wife when I was 17. Now I'm 94. Give me a certificate. Your age can't make wife give you a certificate. They will tell you you failed. Go on the right. So that you've been in church for 40 years does not make you know it. If you don't know it, you don't know it. Sit down and know it. Virtues of love. Virtues of what? Let's see the virtues of love. It's right here. First Corinthians 13, 4 to 8. Amplified. We are going to read the Amplified now. Shall we look at Amplified? So I'm going to take a teaching from here. Love endures with patience. And what? Love is kind and thoughtful. And it's not jealous or envious. Love does not brag and is not proud or arrogant. Read verse 5. It does not rejoice in injustice, but rejoices with the truth when right and truth prevail. Love never fails. It never fails, nor ends. But as for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for gifts of special knowledge, they will pass away. Shout hallelujah. Number one virtue. God's love endures long and is patient and kind. I'm taking verse 4, verse 7. God's love endures long. And is patient and what? Kind. From verse 4 and verse 7, where we read. It says, love endures with what? Patience. Did you have that? Love is kind. Verse 4. Is that your Bible? <laughs> love bears all this. Now, but you hear this. Many can endure for a while, but not patient and kind while enduring. I'll explain what I mean. I've endured you, but I'm running out of patience. And you know that I've endured you, and I won't take this nonsense anymore. <laughs> You don't understand love. You don't understand what? You don't understand love. Now, think about how God is putting up with us, with all our nonsense. Just imagine your life. Oh, yeah. Yes, you come to church, wear a suit, go behind you, what nonsense you do. And God has been putting up with all the nonsense you have been doing. It is not something impossible. God could have asked us to love one another if it was impossible. Many are impatient with others, including husbands and wives. I've endured this woman, I can't take it anymore. You don't understand love. I've endured this man. No, 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 no. Pastor, don't tell me that. I've endured him. You don't understand love. I have been there before. So I know what I'm talking about. Listen carefully. I just want to do it my own way. This is my own way. Forget whatever the Bible is saying. The flesh will want to tell you you have endured. But when you understand the revelation of love, you'll be patient and be kind to the same person. Now, I'll give you a example. Many people who are working with me would have been sacked before they got to where they are. If I never understood the meaning of love, I would have sacked them long ago because they have made terrible mistakes. 
if I was to walk by human feelings. Most of them, from the mistakes, they began to correct and correct and became where they are. But most of them cannot relate it from junior ones because they don't have the revelation I have. There's no perfect person. You are just walking from one mistake to another. You are moving. It's like a child. You fall, you get up again, you fall again, you get up again, till you became strong. Most of us, when we, we know the mistakes you have made, in the mistakes you keep battling, they give you work in the office, you make mistakes, if you make mistakes, they say calculate, you calculate upside down, you do. They pan, look at you and say, is that how you train you in your school? I want you to improve. It didn't suck you. You came back again. <laughs> now, one of the pastors who, I won't call his name, one day maybe he's teaching, he will tell you himself. I stood at his back when he came to this ministry and he was praying for the sick. I stood at his back, he didn't know. When I was praying, I said, excuse me, pastor. Are you a catechist? I said, you pray like this in this church for a sick man? I said, if this man does not get well, you will never eat food. He was praying, you know, we were praying, we were coming. I tell you this sickness, you will go, you will go. <laughs> so I stood at his back, I said, excuse me, in this church? I said, this man will be well or you will eat. So I said, carry every sick person and give to this pastor. <laughs> at least I was him. I challenge him. Today is one of the people who God used in healing here. Do you understand now? I was patient with them. I was patient with all the people who work with me. Now listen, if you want to understand love, you must be patient with people. You don't just endure, you must also be kind to the same people. Husbands and wife, hear me? This is the virtue marriages are missing. They have endured, but I can't take it anymore because they don't understand love. He said, love endures and is patient. Take note. Verse 4. Love endures with patience. So it's not only endurance. You have to be patient. Your husband is still demand. Be patient with him. He has to grow to the point where you have revelation that he doesn't have to be stingy. Love endures. We endure. have endured enough, but you are not what? This is the missing virtue of love that's not there. You are not kind. Because of the you are no longer kind. You say, well, I can't give you food anymore. I can't give her any money anymore. No, that's not love. When you understand love, you'll be patient and you'll be kind. So you know what love is now. <laughs> hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. Has God been patient with you? Plenty. May you have understanding. Number two, virtue. From verse five of that same scripture, where is it amplified? Please take note. It says, it is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not provoked, not overly sensitive, and easily what? Anger. Does not take into account a wrong endured. So number two, God's love does not behave itself unseemly Seek it not our own. In bracket. God's love doth. Bracket open. Not behave itself unseemly. Comma. Seek it not our own. Is that true? What does that mean? God's love. Kind of love. Does not insist on his own rights. It does not insist on what? Oh, it must have, no, I must have my way. That's not God's love. No, I must have my way. No, 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 I must have my way. It is not self-seeking. It means God's love is not selfish. That's the meaning. It's not what? God's love is sacrificial. That's the meaning of that scripture. God says what? Sometimes you place yourself above others. Sorry, you place others above yourself. That's what God's love means. If you always seek your own interest first, you cannot manifest God's kind of love. If I ever am with people until they eat, I can't eat. Ask all people who work with me. If there's no food, I'll be very angry with you. I said, give these people food for goodness sake. 
I can never chat with any of my workers and they have not eaten. And I said, you give me food. I said, no, find food. I went to Abuja for a program, not our church, in another church. And they gave me presidential suite and the pastor was very happy where I ministered. And I didn't do it mechanically. I came out and I said, where's the room for those who came with me? He said he was watching me. He said, oh, they told me I love, but I, he saw it practical. I came and I said, Pastor, I want to know where these people are staying. They showed me. I said, where are the people staying? He said, this one. I said, where's the other room for the other people? So I said, where's the next room for the other? He said he was watching me. He said, ah, can they, at my level. I refused to sit down. I didn't do it mechanically. I didn't do it by, I didn't even know that was, I said, show me the rooms of everybody who followed me. They showed. I said, they have something to eat? Yes. Then I came back. It was what I was done. He said, they've been telling him, oh, they were just watching me. He said, man who came to a bridge is busy finding out the junior ones where they will stay. He said, learn something from me, the pastor. This thing I'm preaching is not theory. I'm not preaching theory. God's love, you put people above you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You know, man naturally is selfish. Man is what? Very selfish. An average person is selfish. <laughs> Woo! If you're always taking account of evil done to you, then you have not understood God's kind of love. Are you picky? Touchy? Resentful? Then watch it. You need to check your love to meter. You need to check your what? You are touchy. Every small thing you are picky. See what he did to me. See what she did. She cannot even do this. She cannot do it. Ah, no, you, you've not understood love. You're picky. Everything you complain. Everything. She, she, for three days, she not. No, no, no. Love does not do so. Let me ask you a question. If you were in the shoes of Joseph, say the truth. <laughs> you know why I'm teaching love this period? Every man you see at the top, this is their secret. If you are in the shoes of Joseph, when your brothers threw you to kill you, they didn't plan, they wanted you dead. They turn to pitch, sold into slavery. Then they are not privileged to come to you for assistance. Hey! Yeah! You will know whether you love. You know, you say, thank God, you've entered my trap now. <laughs> I will show you, Pepe. <laughs> you have not understood love. Joseph, the Bible said, turned and wept when he saw his brothers. He wept because he said, you meant it for evil, but now God has lifted me. There's no point in me revenging. He never gave them back money. May God give you understanding of his word. He said, love suffered. You don't look at the wrong done to you. You don't look at it. So I'm not preaching love. I live love. So I hear are you hearing what I'm saying? When God's love dominates you, you will not pay attention to what wrong people have done to you. You pay no attention. You pay no what? To what wrong people have done to you. you it will mean nothing. No matter the wrong people have done to you, say, forget it, forget it, forget it, forget it. Let's go forward. Let's go what? People preach love, oh. People preach love. Pastors preach love, but don't walk in love. I've seen pastors don't walk in love. Now, if you doubt it, meet a pastor. When I'm a pastor, a man of God. This is how you know a man of God walks in love. And try to praise another man of God before him. If it doesn't make a negative remark, you know, if not, when I say, just, if you want to try a pastor, this is what you say, just go. Say, oh, thank God for that man of God. He said, don't mind them. We don't really know what they are doing. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. <laughs> Just what, what? Behave like Joseph. Behave like who? Behave like who? One thing with love, it brings promotion without struggles. Joseph was promoted because God knows that this is a man with a large heart. People who love, they have large heart. They can accommodate people. Are you hearing me? Number three, virtue. God's love never fails. 
God's love, number what? Fails. Verse 8. Does not fade, cannot be obsolete. God is love, so love cannot come to an end. Love is failure proof. Love is what? God's kind of love can transform any marriage. The day husband and wife understand love, their marriage problem will end. If you don't want to fail in life, walk in love. Love never fails. I can't fail. Forget it. I walk in love. Well, I don't want us to be preaching theory. Copy note. Love is point one. Love, point two. Love, point three. Those are theories. I've seen men of God who preach love. And when I look at them, I say, this man, what is he preaching? There are some people, the way they even preach, you know that they already, do you know if a pastor says a negative remark about a pastor, the members will react. If a pastor, you know, there's a way a man can talk, comment about another pastor, even if he does not mention the name, that the members will know that this is a pastor. And every member from that church will be receptive towards that pastor. I've seen churches where the members are receptive towards me. I just say, this is their pastor, no matter how he pretends. There's something talking about me. All of them cannot be receptive about me. Anywhere they meet me, they, there's this no flow. This might say something about me, even if we laugh in the open. But you know, this church, I've never, I will never talk about any man of God. To do what now? If I finish preaching, I will not be talking about somebody else. But when people don't walk in love, they will tell you, hey, hey, we thank God for what he's doing. So don't mind them all. Number four. Are you there? God's love forgives. God's love forgives. Verse five. The be part. It does not take into account a wrong endured. Did you hear that? It does not take into account a wrong what? Endured. Forgiveness becomes easy when you have a revelation of the love of God. I forgive people in advance. I forgive what? Before they offend me, I forgive them. So I can live long. If we don't walk in love, I can tell you, you die quick. Because bitterness and bitter's destiny. Do you know when you're walking in bitterness, you'll be angry more than the person who offended you? You'll drop a tie for nothing. The person may not even know. It's like drinking poison and expecting somebody else to die. When you walk in bitterness, the person passes, everything will be irritating you, but the person may be laughing. And you are just dying for nothing. Ephesians 4, verse 32. Shall we together want to go? Ephesians 4, 32. And be ye kind one to another. Tender hearted. Forgiving what? Even as God for Christ's sake and what? Forgiving what? Forgiving one another. Refuse to be ruled by the flesh. Be ruled by the word of God. Learn to forgive people. Ooh. Carry something somebody did to you three years in your heart, one year in your heart. If you know what this man did to me, eh? I won't forgive him. Okay, I've forgiven him all, but what? that my husband, what he did. Ah, that my wife, what she did. You don't understand. Am I too perfect? No way. Is my wife too perfect? No way. It's love that's making us to move. You think I've not offended my wife? No way. You think she has not offended me? No way. But when you understand love, you forget it. You don't see it. Two of us are not perfect. We are walking into perfection. There's no way, there's no way I have not offended her. I must have offended her plenty, plenty times. Maybe offended her even today, I didn't know. <laughs> because you can offend somebody without knowing. You don't know. People, people just speak on things anyhow. Jesus said, they ask my minister to go forgive me. He said, they talk, is it seven, is it not seven times? So, 70 times. So, that one, 400, can someone offend you 490 times? Nobody in this world in a day will offend you 490. It's not possible. So, he's telling you that no situation should make you not to forgive. I won't forgive my husband. Do you know he went to a shop? Did not buy me anything. 
Endure. He's a stingy man. He will change. <laughs> He's walking into a point where he will change. Leave him. Do you know he goes to the fridge and takes food to eat alone? One day he will know that it's a bad habit. It's a heal habit. He should not do that. Endure him. You'll be giving him food. Then one day he will still say, how can my wife be sharing her own thing? Him, no, I'm not sure. He will come to his senses. But today we are not patient. So because we are not patient, people are divorcing anyhow. No patience. Because they don't understand. No. Love is not static but dynamic. Love is not what? Love grows. You know why it grows? Because love is a fruit of the spirit. Love grows. Love what? The love you have last year cannot be the love this year. Love grows. Galatians 5, 22, 23. But the fruit of the spirit, the first fruit of the spirit, look at it, is what? That's the first thing of the fruit of the spirit. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, Meekness, temperance against such, there is no law. It's a fruit of what? The spirit. Because it's a fruit, you are what Jesus said. This is where I'm going. John 15 verse 5. He said, I am divine, ye are the branches. Did you hear that? I am divine, ye are what? The branches. We are branches and fruits grow on branches. I'm sorry. <laughs> I am the vine. If you see any fruit on any tree, where does it grow? Fruits don't grow on the stem, stalk. It grows on the branches. So he's saying, if you are my branches, then grow with fruits. And the first fruit is what? Love. So God is saying, develop. You are born again human spirit to grow in line with God's word. That's what he's saying. You are my branch, so develop because the word of God is already in you. So your born again human spirit should not begin to grow with the word of God from one level to another. It's not a, a thing you live static. You keep growing. You keep growing. You keep growing. You keep growing. The way I love now is higher than before. It's easy to what? Preach love. But when you begin to walk in this kind of love, your results will be amazing. When you say, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. There's nothing you will do with love that will reduce you. I'll tell you two benefits of love. Benefits of God's kind of love. The benefits, number one, A, it is failure proof. It is what? Love never fails. So failure ends in your life today. The easiest way to succeed is to walk in love. It's a love never fails. So if I want to succeed, what do I do? Listen. If I want to succeed, what do I do? It's not the rigorous theories you read. You can read all the principles and not be a principal. Love never fails. So love is failure proof. So when I walk in love, I just succeed. Do you understand that? If it never fails, means anybody who walks in love will do what? You will succeed. You don't need to struggle to succeed when you walk in love. I'm not succeeding based on the theories people think. My secret of success is what? Love. You can read all the Bible, read everything, but one small thing, you are bitter with everybody, you will still not get results. Poor thing is uh, the reading of big, big books that makes them succeed. Nah. There are those who read more than me, preach more than me, not yet to results because they don't love. Even while he's reading, he's thinking of how he would demonstrate arrogantly. Are you blessed here? Yeah. You won't fail, though. As I say, you will not fail. Yeah. That you came for this program, it means you are shifted to another level. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Love guarantees instant answers to prayers. Guarantees what? When you walk in this kind of love, God answers your prayers. First John 3, 22, 23. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment. Read the commandment. That we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, 
and love one another as he gave us command. When we live in love, we open our mouth. He asks us. So I hear. So I hear. Uh, okay, you want to know? Look at the man Solomon. How did God answer him? And Solomon loved the Lord. Do you remember? First Kings chapter 3, verse 3. And Solomon did what? And Solomon did what? Love the Lord. Now in verse 13, look at the same chapter. Look at what the Bible says. I have also given thee that which does not what? God answered him speedily because of love. Both what? He didn't ask for this. You want God to answer you? He want God to answer you? Walk in love. He said, both riches and what? Solomon asked him, I said, Lord, give me wisdom that I will know how to rule your people. God said, you love them to a point. You didn't ask for anything of yourself. You didn't ask me to give you money. You didn't ask, I should do that. I should give you wisdom to rule his people. That's how you love them. Now, take money. Wouldn't you like that kind of prayer? Eh? Read the Solomon. Solomon said, Lord, give me wisdom to rule your people. God said, you love these people to this point? Take money. Take money. I give you. Riches and honor. Do you want God to answer you? And Jesus said, the greater than Solomon what? Is here. Matthew 12, 42b. And as far as sent him, so he sent him. John 17, verse 18. So you want God to answer you speedily? What do you do? Walk in love. Don't sing love, oh. Don't sing, I love you, Lord. I love you. God did not say that if you sing love. It didn't say if you write love tests. If you walk in love, rise to your feet. When you walk in love, struggle ends. Lord, from today, I want to walk in love and I know I will never fail again. He said, love never fails. Go ahead and make a commitment to God. I walk in the love of God. Pray the Holy Ghost. Across this, le krako tale gede bregedia kotale gede bregedia kotanto janto bragadia. E brasses a le krako tale gede bregesia kotale bregedi. E krako sakato bregeti katanta na katale gedi gedi janto bragadia gata. E kroko zako tale bregeti tata e li tatolo bregesiza. I receive grace to walk in the love of God. Thank you, Father. He said, God does not give you a spirit of what? Fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. May the spirit of love begin to walk in your life. Yeah.